My daughter just told me, you know, every time uh, lightning strikes, it has the same intensity of heat from the sun. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I think I've always liked rainstorms ever since I was a kid because I remember uh, whenever there was a, a storm back, I'm um, from Massachusetts, whenever there was a storm, I would always run to the living room window and just look out and just, I wouldn't leave until it was over. So, and now that I come to think of it, my dad used to do that too, so I think I picked it up from him uh, as well, so. And then the second song I wrote was um, Rainstorms. Because when I first came here to Indiana, I was mesmerized by the rainstorms here. Um, I've never heard thunderstorms like ones here. Um, there was a thunderstorm when I first moved here that actually woke me up out of my sleep. And I usually do not wake up with thunderstorms, but it totally woke me up. Um, and then you just go outside. Uh, well, not no, you wouldn't go outside. You'd look out the window and. Uh, look at just the, the lightning, the power of the lightning. And I was just totally amazed. And then I would listen to different rainstorms here. Um, and I wanted to try to create that same effect in the song. So, yeah. Storms. Disturbances of normal conditions of the atmosphere, manifesting themselves by winds of unusual force or direction. My name is Ana Garcia. Um, I'm a music educator and a musician. Uh, I play different instruments. Um, there are times I just go in my room and, you know, I'll just go play an instrument or I'll just go bang on something. Um, or I'll just go listen to different genres of music. and. Though, though I've gone through challenges in my life, the one thing I do appreciate about music it, is that it's just been a great release for me. Um, never ran to drugs, never ran to alcohol, or things like that. Um, I've just been able to um, either go talk with friends or go and play. Um, and I've been very, very grateful for that. Anna is married to Victor Garcia. She has two children, Victor, who is 15 and shares the same name with his father, and 13-year-old Maya Garcia. Um, sometimes when she gets in the door, she gets a little frustrated, and you, when she gets upstairs, you hear the music getting really loud, Then after a while, it kind of, yeah, it kind of doesn't get as loud. Yeah, because, I mean, even my kids know that, um, I think this just comes from growing up as an only child. I just need times when I just need to be totally by myself, you know, and the kids are just like, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! No! This is just my time. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know, they have to go somewhere. <laughs> And, um, and I usually have to uh, fight for those times. And, um, but they're well worth fighting for uh, when they actually happen. And uh, we were married in 1992, but he was diagnosed with uh, diabetes actually in 1991 um, and you know he did the best that he could in terms of managing it um, before we got married. It was about 2005 where everything started to break down. My husband was uh, getting very sick uh, to the point where he couldn't walk uh, anymore so uh, he had to stop working and then I had to take over and just totally um, provide for the family. Um, and that was about six years ago. And so um, 
between 2005 and 2007 was our worst time because of the fact that he had, between that time, I think it was 14 strokes. And he was in and out of the hospital constantly um, for him going into the hospital. But not just that, the two operations that he had. Um, that first operation, we were really worried about because he could have died on the operating table. Um, he was that weak and the doctors weren't sure if he was going to come through or not. So, but he did. Um, as a matter of fact, he came through really well. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, unfortunately he had to do a second operation. Um, because they didn't get all the infection out. So, um, that was the one I was really nervous about. Uh, because they had to bring in a plastic surgeon. So, but he came through that one as well. Uh, since his last operation, he's coming up on two months. That's the next thing, is, is that for him to come home. Um, um, like I said, it's it's just been very hard for him to bounce back. Uh, so what we are focusing on is that um, usually, I guess, uh, a person would go through an operation, stay at the hospital for a short amount of time, and then they would go to an acute care facility uh, to recuperate. Um, in, and then they, they would go home. But in Victor's case, it's taking him longer to recuperate. And so he's going from the hospital to an acute care facility um, to another facility so that he can fully recuperate. Because if he came home right now, um, at home we wouldn't be um, prepared to, keep, to take care of him to take care of all of his needs. But the thing was, uh, I just always wanted to be alone. Um, even though I was lonely, I don't know, contradiction terms or something. But um, as I got older, my dad um, got sick and he died when I was 16 um, from cancer. Before every storm, there is a calm. Anna had an easy, as you can say, peaceful life until she turned nine. I think the, the storms from nine to 12 were calm um, and they were terrifying. And they left me with, what am I supposed to do? And there was no answer. Whereas from 12, to 16, they were more loud, brash, violent, um, and so I knew to protect myself, and I knew how to prepare myself for them. There was a time where my dad was for lack of a better word, reminiscing back to when he was in Nam, and um, he had a Winchester 38 rifle in his closet. He would never take it out until that one time. Loaded it up, went to the living room, and shot at the window. And I remember, I was in the bathroom, and I had the door open, and uh, I don't know whether I was looking at my hair or just fixing my face, and I heard this shot, and it just rang through my whole body. I didn't scream, I just flinched. And um, I ran to the living room, I looked, he retracted the rifle, put it to the side, and sat back down and watched television. Uh, 
And I was like, okay. There was this huge gaping hole where the bullet just penetrated through the wall, through the window, and out. And all I could do was just think about if anybody was on the other side. And then it dissipated. I never shared that story with anybody until now. Although my mother had to report these incidences because I know that she was trying to get him uh, to go to a mental hospital to get help. But the rule is the person has to go of their own free will. Same as it is today. The person has to go of their own free will. And I'm like, even if they shot a rifle? That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. Um, because he's in danger of hurting himself and other people. Um, but we had to find a way to to get him into the hospital, into the VA hospital. Now he finally went. I don't know how my mother did it, but she did it. Um, and so, you know, from that point on until the time that he died, he remained in the hospital. At, at the time, um, teenagers 16 and under weren't allowed to go to the hospital. So I really wasn't able to see my dad while he was there. Um, up until he died. Up until he died, yeah. I wasn't able to see him. So, but, uh, just glad that they softened that rule. Um, I don't know when they did it, but I'm glad they did. Because it was a real strain, because I was closer to my dad. Well, obviously I was closer to my dad than I was my mom. So, not seeing him and being able to say goodbye the way I wanted to, at least. Um, I wasn't able to do that. Um, I wouldn't even call it a good conversation. It was, Daddy, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> um, I, I couldn't figure him out. And he just wasn't coming forthright. Uh, with what he really wanted to tell me. Um, he tried the best way he could, um, but it just never really came out. Uh, and so, um, I was just like, oh, okay, he's just going through one of his emotional moments. Um, you know, I just put it as that, but then it got to the point where I couldn't see him anymore. And I was like, what's going on? What's happening? Why can't I see my dad? Um, what was he trying to tell you? That he was dying and that he loved me very much. And uh, he wasn't going to be able to see me graduate from high school. Which is something he really wanted to see. Why did it mean so much to him? I don't know. The only guess that I have since I was his only child just to see